Let's close the bridge. Hi, I'm Danny. This is Torin, and we're turning this lifeboat into a liveaboard. Welcome back to our channel. In today's episode, we are going to do several different short but important jobs, all of which span the time between September and March of last year. So this was a time when we were out of the water and various exciting things happened, like this one, which was receiving our electric engine. Now, it's not installed yet because we've been waiting for batteries, but that is what is going to power Luyas. That's pretty cool. Torrent also made these cleats and we came to the boat and installed those so we were no longer tying on with big ropes on the davit listing lifting devices. He's just using some copper coat there to attach them, anti-seize, and we've got three of those going down each side of the boat now. You'll remember that we're back in the water now. So this past winter, this is the winter of 20 to 21, we were doing a little bit of work, but not so much in preparation to come back out in March, but we did do some framing. So you could see our head there. This is looking out the aft window. We framed in our shower is right here. And then we did some tiling. All right, so we are outside Canadian Tire and Torrens just run in there to have a look because we are supposed to be laying our tile today and we have run into our first issue already, which is that there is a citywide Sikaflex shortage. Apparently, Payne's Marine, which is the distributor for everybody here, doesn't want to order more Sikaflex until February to extend the um, like best before dates, I guess through this whole sailing season. Torin is trying to see what other options we have. We're looking for a flexible glue so that once our tile is down, it can still bend and flex a little bit with the boat. If he can't find anything good today, we're just gonna wait and pre-cut everything and lay it out. And then I guess in February, we'll glue our tiles down. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but this is not the issue that we anticipated having today. I thought we would have plenty of other problems because we've never laid tile before, but this was not one of them. So we did end up finding glue and went back to the boat. And what we're tiling here is our steering station. We are putting a lot of tile in the boat for a couple of reasons. One, we both love it. And also because we do need to add weight and this tile of course is heavy. So that's a great way to do it. But of course a concern is the cracking. And so we, did this as a sample just to see how it would hold up through the winter and through the motion of the boat on the water. So, so far we've had no issues and we're really happy with the sample and we'll do a lot more of this uh, coming up as we continue to build Luya. Here is a better view of the tile that we picked. So we both really love hardwood but of course salty environment is not great so we got a wood look tile and Torin is about to experiment with scoring and cutting it. And that, uh, spoiler alert, this did not go right. Alright, so now, theoretically, we do this. It's supposed to break. Which it did. Put your glasses on, man. <laughs> So this cute little tile circular saw I had basically thrown in our shopping cart as a whim and I'm really glad I did because though quite dusty it did work really well. We'll use a wet tile cutter for our big job but this at least got us through the steering station without shattering all over the place. We're gonna try and grout this. We've just watched a YouTube video about how we grout in here and we'll see how it goes. But the first step is to wash the tile off a little bit. So since we glued our tile down, we don't really have as much to clean off. Uh, there's no like concrete residue or cement or whatever they use. We don't really have anything in our grout lines because we were able to use the Gorilla Glue. So it was aimed pretty carefully, but get the dust out of there and the grout says it needs to be slightly damp. We are using Mathe flexible grout, hoping that that will allow for 
the movement of the boat. And it's a color, so we've picked this color. Hopefully, it'll go okay with our wood. They also do matching silicone, so we'll pick that up later to do our little final edges. Oops, yeah, just like icing a cake or something. Not the most attractive color in a lump like that. Basically just trying to fill in all these gaps and then in a minute we'll be washing the excess off and by a minute I think I mean half an hour. Alright so it's cured for the few minutes that the packaging says and now we are gently washing off the grout. Obviously only trying to get it off the surface and not the grout lines but it is doing sort of an interesting like milky situation. Not really sure what's going on there but hopefully we won't have the Milky Way when we're done, though it doesn't look horrendous, so <laughs> we might just have an abstract floor. From there, we moved on to flooring of a different type. So you guys will remember that Luia being a lifeboat is full of expanded foam. All over the place in that hull is feet on feet on feet of foam. And so we're leaving what we can where we can, but there are places where we need to cut it out, where we need to have a floor to walk past, where we need a little bit of storage, things like that. So Torin heroically spent hours over the winter um, getting rid of that foam. It is not easy to take out of the boat. And then once he did, he got down to hull, and of course the hull is curved. And so these bricks, blocks of wood, are part of his project to make a flat subfloor for us. So he cut all of these sort of weird offset triangle shapes and then they went onto the hull and by fiberglassing them in against the curve of the hull he was able to create sort of tiny stringers shall we say to make a flat floor for us to work with. So unfortunately it's a little bit hard to see but this is Torin putting in that floor so he's got that triangle piece of wood on the hull and he's drawing around with sharpie the area to grind out and then fiberglass in the future. And the wood, I think, on top just to show him that it is flat and true. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so... I need you to go up top. This was a fun day, too, taking out the davit lifting pieces. So we did this in a couple of parts. Each of these weighed like 150 pounds at least, and that was what the boat hung on the ferry from. So of course, a little bit out of order because we're out of the water here, but Torin did take the aft one off. I think I wasn't even there that day. He just did it without my help because he's very strong and very determined. But you get a sense here of these incredible pieces of hardware that would have suspended Luya. Um, in the foredeck, we've replaced that with our anchor and roller and our windlass. And in the back, that space is actually going to be our barbecue holder. One of the other reasons we didn't do so much on the boat during this period was that Grandpa, who we live with, actually fell in the house and broke his leg. So there the ambulance is taking him away. And while he wasn't at home recuperating, that did take some of our time and energy, of course. But we're so happy that he's home and doing really great. And he was there at Christmas to try out our cubic mini wood stove, which is going in Luya. It's glowing red and underneath and now. It's like big old... Those big logs are burning. By big, we mean two inches. Well, look at it, really giving it. And really giving it was us from the rest of 2021. So coming up next episode, we haul out again and go back to the boatyard. So that's April of 2021. We are working really hard to get caught up. And thank you so much for watching, for all your patience, for liking, for subscribing, and for following us along on this journey. We will see you soon.